it's finally happened. The dreaded power converter has failed. So I don't really have any DC power. I have AC power, but only when the generator is running. I'm gonna go inside this cabinet here, pull out the converter, go into town and see if I can't find a new one. Well, at least I got the water pump fixed yesterday, but now another problem. This apparently is a very common problem for a lot of people. I just lucked out and managed to go almost seven years before it finally happened, but at least I got a shower done today. It's a little wet. So let's take this thing apart, pull out the old converter, run into town, and see if we can't get a new one. First thing we need to make sure we got no power. I'm out here boondocking, so there's no AC power. The diesel generator is turned off, and the battery's disconnected, so there should be any power here now. Let's take this apart, five wires, remove the converter, and go into town. So down here is the converter, something's wrong with it, so it's got to go. So here we go, got a raspberry kind of color and a white one. Come up here, go around the back and pops up to here. So this is where I got to take these two off, then I've got this black wire comes up here. It's got this dead end wire coming off of it too. Then the green and white, green comes to this post, and the white comes up to this post. So I have to pull these two, this set here, and of course these two. So let's get to it. While trying to pull this thing out, I had to pry push down. But unfortunately, I broke the piece of plastic. I was clipping it down here at the bottom. So that's unfortunate, but it's plastic. Not a whole lot I could have done to prevent that. But it's frayed, so now I can get to these two wires and a piece of plastic for trash. And some of those stupid gauges we have on our pods, almost all RVs have these. These tank gauges and battery gauges, but it shows it in one thirds, two thirds. It's, it's useless when it comes to trying to monitor your battery since most lead acid batteries, they say don't go below 50%. Well, that's somewhere between one third, two thirds. So where am I at? <laughs> So typically me, take everything apart. Let's find out what's all going on here. It looks like one or two of these lines are coming up from the battery. Forgot the voltage. So, yeah. Means I got a lot of space in here. I can put another better battery monitor installed in here and just run wires. There's a future project. It's time for an upgrade. I pulled out the WFCO 9855 charge converter. It has only one fan. Because it doesn't seem to be working no more. It's not charging my battery. I think I've been pretty fortunate. Most people complain about their R-Pods charge controller going out within like the first year or two. But I've pretty much living in this thing better part of half a year to the full year for like the last six years. And this just finally went out. So that's been pretty fortunate for me. It's not too hard to take out. You got two screws in here and it slides out. Then you got three wires, green, black, and white. Comes from the boards over here. Make sure you remember where they're at. Takes a good idea to take a picture of it before you start pulling everything out. Then you got these two big honking wires. This uh, magenta, raspberry, and a white one. These guys, whew, I'm telling you what. Here's a, here's what's going to be replacing also. These two wires were screwed in here on the original board. It's still in here. And they were cranked in there. I mean, it was so hard. I thought they were soldered in because they were just, I couldn't get them loose. But after finally cranking hard enough, it finally came all loose and I was able to pull these two wires out. Okay, so we're changing out that one for the Progressive Dynamics board. Now this one is a lithium, so I'll be able to use lithium batteries. I currently have an AGM battery, but I'm going to replace it here in the next couple of days. But this will finally be a lithium upgrade so I can use lithium batteries. Now this particular board is a 45 amps with the um, PD4645 LIV. So what this one is 45 amps instead of 55 amps, so it's a little less. 
but I think I'm going to be just fine. Now the problem though is when I slide this one in here for the test fit, it's a little bit uh, wider, but it's the same depth, but it's flush against here. Here's the original panel, and this is where the two honking wires, I mean I had to really crank on these two guys to finally get them loose to open this up. And of course when I pulled it out, where'd it go? This is up in here with two pins at the top and one at the bottom, and unfortunately I broke the bottom one, but pull this back. See back in here, there's a plastic post. So in the new board, when I put this new board in, I'll be able to put a screw through here and go screw it in this plastic post and that'll make it solidly fit in here. But this is flushed in here and there's no way to get to the original screws. So they have an adapter piece. So what'll have to happen, so I'll mount this adapter piece in here first and then slide this in there and it'll latch on to these plastic hooks to secure it to the bottom and won't go rattling around. That's the easy part. Now for the more interesting part is this replacement board which adds a wire. So I gotta put this wire in, just plugs in here and on this board it plugs in down here what this allows me to do then is I can change modes manually and force it into different modes. This little button up here at the top. But I should never have to use that. Here's the tricky part. Looking at the original board here, you can see the one through 10 were used. Nine was skipped. So there's nine, but this has a total of 11 pins. This new board has 12 and the bottom two it says low current I don't know why because it doesn't specify anywhere in the literature what low current means as long as I avoid using the, the low current since it doesn't say what that low current means I'll be fine so I just go for one to one down here and just use the first nine I should be fine and avoid these two low current ones the biggest one is this 30 amp for the slide out motors, as long as it's not in these bottom ones, whatever low current means. Now, to add to the confusion though, is the sticker to replace your panel. It's numbered starting at one at the top and 12 at the bottom. But this panel, the circuit board, starts at one at the bottom and 12 at the top. So as long as you keep your order straight, it should be fine. Just know that the numbers, the numbers are bottom to top 1 through 12 but your paper is 1 through 12 starting at the top a little confusion but as long as I go one for one I should be fine and don't use the bottom ones and back in my Navy day we had to use a paper wiring diagram and would write all this down on paper but I'm cheating with the phone just use the phone picture to keep track of where everything is and where all the fuses are oops where all the fuses are so that I put the new board in correctly Well, that's a problem. They have tore into the wires too much. I'm gonna have to redo this one. Now, unfortunately, when they cranked that thing in there, they damaged the wires and it started falling apart. So be careful now this little pieces of metal fall inside here, because that would be bad. That would cause a lot of shorts, sparking and arcing and fires. We don't need any of that. There we go. One down, time to go. Second one, it's the same way. I'm just gonna have to go through and redo all these. So we'll see you on the back side when I'm done with all this. So a long time later, the old board is cleared. And now everything's wired to the new board except for the two big power ones. And here's the post. I'll be able to screw through the center of this board, that metal post onto there and that'll secure it in place because I broke a little plastic tab that was there. So the slow green blinking light means it's in normal mode. So I'm finally charging up the battery. If I come up here to our wicked stupid display, it just shows batteries either fully charged or empty or one third and two thirds. Totally useless when you have a lead ass battery, you need to know when you're at 50%, this two thirds and one third just doesn't help any, but 
check that out shows i'm full charged because i got my generator running now for the freaky mode that's right we have a pair of generators running together coupled together both these generators are connected together and that's what provide my power when i tried running just one of the generators it kept tripping off the generator for over overload so we are cooking with gas now and my refrigerator is now on shore power because the generator is running and of course hook lights are coming on radios powered up although the booster is not on so i'm not picking up a radio station so we are finally good to go once again now i've changed out the converter of course the next one will be uh changing out the batteries shifting them over to lithium now i gotta put everything away that's another job done until something else breaks so let's think about how this got to this position most people like get like a year or two with these uh, uh, charge controllers no charge converters um, until they go out from what I've seen a lot of people complain about uh, I've been doing six years and never had to change out my charge controller but now I've changed it out and upgraded to a lithium so now I can upgrade the lithium batteries so I think the issue was is since I was using pedestal power so much, uh, I didn't really notice the uh, battery was going down. I saw it coming down, but you know, I can't really just go off of that display. Two thirds is a lot. It'll be there at two thirds for a long time. And since the truck is also charges up my trailer's battery while I'm driving, I'm doing, ooh, I don't know, some like eight to nine hours a day of driving. That was charging up the battery slowly. But it was enough to mask the problem that I just didn't know I had. And that is that the charge converter uh, had gone bad. So since the last two nights though I was um, boondocking, uh, the battery went completely dead. There was nothing going into that battery unless the truck was hooked up to it. Because every time I started the generator, it wasn't charging up the, the battery. Now that I have a functioning charge converter, uh, my one generator just couldn't, it was needing too much power and it kept tripping off and over over current so now that I've got two generators running we are cooking good and the moon is just starting to come up and the Sun is set or is already setting so it's the end of another night 